The transversalis fascia block is a lower abdominal truncal block that targets L1 nerve branches, specifically the ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve. Spread can also occur to the T12 subcostal nerve. It is a suitable analgesic option in any surgery within the L1 dermatome, including inguinal hernia repair and open appendectomy. At Toronto Western Hospital, we have also found it particularly suited to providing analgesia for anterior islet crest bone graft harvesting, as the block is performed proximal to the L1 branches that innervate the anterior islet crest. The ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves emerge from the lateral border of psoas major, run inferior to the 12th rib, and course over the anterior surface of quadratus lumborum. Lateral to quadratus lumborum, they initially run deep to transversus abdominis for a variable distance before piercing transversus abdominis to enter the tap plane between internal oblique and transversus abdominis. Anterior to the islet crest, the nerves ascend gradually, piercing first internal oblique and then external oblique. However, the location at which this occurs varies widely between individuals. In the TFP block, the nerves can be consistently targeted where they lie deep to transversus abdominis before they ascend into the tap plane and before they give off their lateral cutaneous branches and branches to the islet crest. At this point, the nerves are sandwiched in a plane between the investing fascia of quadratus lumborum or of transversus abdominis and the transversalis fascia. The transversalis fascia is a thin membrane between transversus abdominis and extraperitoneal fascia. This plane is the target for local anesthetic spread. Transversus abdominis and internal oblique taper off posteriorly into a common epineurosis, also called the thoracolumbar fascia, where they meet the lateral border of quadratus lumborum. The tapered end of transversus abdominis forms an important landmark for performing the block. Note that extraperitoneal fat and not the peritoneal cavity usually lies deep to the end of transversus abdominis, minimizing any concerns about visceral perforation. This composite sonogram illustrates the sonoanatomy of the region. Starting anteriorly, the three layers of the abdominal wall can be readily identified. Internal oblique is usually the thickest layer, while transversus abdominis is thinnest and darkest. More posteriorly, the transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscles taper off into their common aponeurosis, the thoracolumbar fascia, and abut against quadratus lumborum. The dark hypoechoic area deep to the tapering off of transversus abdominis is retroperitoneal fat and not the peritoneal cavity as previously mentioned. The asterisk marks the not target for needle tip placement. The target for needle tip placement is just deep to the fascia of transversus abdominis. Injection here produces a visible pocket of local anesthetic that pushes the retroperitoneal fat downwards. Injection above the fascia distends the transversus abdominis muscle, as has happened here, and this is a sign that the needle needs to be advanced one fascial pop deeper. I tend to recommend a curved probe in most adult patients unless they are very slim. The wider field of view helps with sonoanatomy recognition, and it often also results in better contrast and a clearer view of fascial layers. Resolution is not important in this block. A longer 80 mm needle is usually needed in adult patients. 20 mL is a sufficient volume. I most commonly perform this as an analgesic block, so I tend to use 0.25% bupivacaine or 0.5% ropivacaine but always with epinephrine to reduce systemic uptake and reduce the risk of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. It is recommended that the patient be placed in the lateral decubitus position. However, it is also possible to perform the block with the patient in a supine position. The patient is turned towards the operator with the operative side uppermost. The machine is placed on the opposite side of the bed. As mentioned, I recommend a curved probe in most patients unless they are very slim. The probe is placed in the mid-axillary line just above the eyelet crest. 
The external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis are identified and traced posteriorly to where the transversus abdominis tapers off into its aponeurosis. The quadratus lumborum is often, but not always, visible just posterior to this taper. Tilting the probe slightly corded into the pelvis often improves the view of the tapered end of transversus abdominis. An 80 mm block needle is inserted in plane to the probe in an anterior to posterior direction. An echogenic needle is useful given the relatively steep angle and depth. The needle is advanced through external oblique and internal oblique, aiming for the tapered tip of transversus abdominis. Penetration of the fascial layers between muscles is signaled by both tactile and fascial pops. Once the needle tip has pierced the deep fascia of transversus abdominis, a test injection is performed. Correct needle tip position is signaled by a pocket of local anesthetic between the deep fascia of transversus abdominis and the transversalis fascia. If this is not seen, the needle tip has been advanced too deep into the retroperitoneal fat and should be withdrawn slightly. If the needle tip has not been advanced deep enough, expansion of the transversus abdominis will be seen. A question that is often asked is, how does the TFP block differ from the lateral quadratus lumborum block? On the surface, they are both very similar, both being performed where the transversus abdominis muscle tapers off into the thoracolumbar fascia. However, there are some subtle differences. First, in the TFP block, the probe is kept low and close to the eyelid crest instead of being somewhat higher and closer to the costal margin. Second, the injection is performed anterior to the tapered end of the transversus abdominis muscle rather than posterior to it. We are not aiming for posterior spread towards the paravertebral space, but more importantly, passing through the transversus abdominis muscle makes it easier to distinguish between an injection that is too shallow and that distends the muscle versus injection in the correct plane that creates a pocket under the muscle fascia. Here is another example of a TFP block that illustrates some of these principles. Note how the image quality is not exactly ideal, but nevertheless, uh, the endpoints are quite clear. Transversus abdominis is the thinnest and darkest muscle layer. The needle is advanced through transversus abdominis and the test injection is performed. A little air is seen, but the injection is clearly above the transversus abdominis muscle. The needle is advanced one pop deeper and another test injection is performed. This produces expansion of the muscle, indicating that it has not yet pierced the deep fascia. The needle is advanced one more pop deeper and now there is clear expansion separating the deep muscle fascia from the transversalis fascia and the retroperitoneal fat below. The entire volume of 20 mils can now be delivered in this location. That concludes this short video. Thank you for watching. And again, don't forget to check out the other videos on this channel.